Welcome to episode 10 of Stress Knits. I hope this is really close. I'm gonna back up a little bit. Okay, so we made it to 10, which is insane. Um, I didn't even know how this is gonna go. So thank you all for supporting the podcast and coming back. Like, this wouldn't be a thing without you guys. So thank you to all returning viewers and thank you to new viewers who are checking me out. Um, it really means a lot that you're spending time with me. There are so many amazing podcasts and the fact that you want to spend some of your day with me means a lot. So, um, sorry for not recording on Monday. Um, Doug was in town. He decided last minute to come down for a really quick trip. Um, yeah, so he was here Monday and yeah, we just got to hang out and go on a date and it was just really nice. Um, yeah, so I didn't record. And then yesterday he left, which is, was Tuesday and I just didn't feel like recording. I had, I, it was, I had class and it was kind of sad, even though I'm gonna see him this upcoming Saturday because it's spring break for me next week. So speaking of that, I am going home to Michigan and I don't know if I'm going to record when I'm home. Um, I should have some time at my parents' house by myself just because of their work schedules. So I will probably record, but I'm not promising an episode. <sighs> yeah, so I feel like I'm out of whack because I haven't done this in over a week, but there's something else I wanted to mention. I'm trying to remember what it was. Oh, so I feel awful drinking out of a plastic water bottle right now, but we are under a boil water advisory in Huntington because there was a water main break and bottled water is all we can drink right now because I am in a dorm room and don't have access to a stove where I can boil water. So I'm sorry for drinking out of a glass of water bottle. I feel horrible about it too, but it's just kind of what has to happen today. So, yes. Um, oh goodness, I feel all out of whack guys. So I'm sorry for this episode in general. I feel like I'm already apologizing a lot. But I have a decent amount to show you. I cast on a bunch of stuff and by stuff I mean socks because it's me. Um, but first, I have my show notes right here and I'm doing things out of order. So I wanted to give a special thank you to Katie who mentioned me on her episode, not the latest one, but the one before that. And Katie, I am sorry, one, that it's hard for me to pronounce the T in your name. And two, thank you so much for the kind words that you said. I, I am just floored, to be honest. You have been one of my favorites since you started. And I'm just so happy for the success that your podcast has and you are you are like my like soul sister if that makes sense um you and I I feel like we have so much in common and I really wish we lived closer and not in ocean away and I love that you love Hamilton and that Candace and Jacqueline love Hamilton so that makes me happy because I'm obsessed I did a Hamilton bulletin board because I'm since I'm an RA, I did a Hamilton bullet bulletin board about um, not throwing away your shot. <laughs> so that made me really happy. Your pug makes me squeal. Your knitting is beautiful. Your sewing is inspirational. And I just, I love you. You're amazing. And so thank you for everything that you said. And I hope one day we get to meet, whether you come to the States, which I know you're doing in October or November. And I'm kind of heartbroken because I will be in pre-wedding mode. And so I won't be able 
to make a trip down to Florida. But hopefully I will come to the UK soon or you will be more on the east, northeast coast, maybe New York, because that's way more doable than Florida. But yeah, so hopefully we get to meet one day. Um, but with that, I would like to announce the winners, because I chose two, of the 300 subscriber giveaway. And again, sorry that this is late. Um, and we are actually over 500 now, which is amazing. So thank you all for doing that. Um, join the Ravelry group if you haven't yet. Uh, the link is in the down bar. And yeah, so I pulled the numbers off of random.org on my computer before the podcast. I locked the thread yesterday and did it because I thought I was going to record yesterday. I was really tired, but... Well, it's on the other side, but I don't want to flash your names before. So, what I did was I drew one number, wrote it down, drew the second number, wrote it down, went to the Ravelry group, found your post, and wrote your Ravelry name in my notebook. So, if you win this, these are your options of yarn. The first winner is number 49 who was nm stacy which wonderful name you and i spell it differently you have an e i do not and um you get the first choice so what i would like you to do is you get to send me one choice um because you will get your first choice so you have an option these are all socks that rock lightweight and this is wear gems water it's really pretty Blues and greens. We have Lady Edith. Downton Abbey reference. And it's gorgeous. The Claw. I don't know, I'm sure, I feel like my wrist is doing something weird. And last, Love. So, Stacy, send me your first choice, and I will be sending that out next week. And the second winner gets to send me two choices because you will get your first choice if it's not Stacy's first choice. Um, so you will get either your first or your second choice. Okay, so that was number 51. And I don't know how to pronounce this, so I am going to spell it. C R A C K. Q O F. Crack off? Maybe? Crack of? Anyway, you won also, so congratulations! Um, just both of you PM me and on Ravelry and give me your choices and your real name and address, and I will send them out to you next week. So thank you all for. <sighs> For entering and hopefully I will be having another giveaway soon for something else but I think I'll be doing that in April so I'm gonna put those down here okay so getting on to the knitting finally almost 10 minutes in <laughs> so I have two finished objects so I'll do the small one first I got really bored and just felt like playing with this yarn, but I didn't feel like casting it on yet. Um, my hair is really scraggly. It's hot and humid out, so having my hair down is not an option today. Because it was like, what? But I did a bird of happiness. And, whew. This is Junk Yarn on her sock base. The 75% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon in the Sylvia colorway, which is based off of Sylvia Plath, who, if you don't know this about me yet, is my favorite author. So it's so pretty. I love it. She's my favorite. And I stuffed her with ends for my cozy memory blanket and lavender. So it smells really good. Hmm. So little bird of happiness finished object. 
the second finished object. Oh, I forgot to be weaving my ends on my second one. Whoops. But I finished my stripey socks for Candace's stripey sock did along of pin feathers and pearls. I need to post my FO picture too. I love them. They're they're so cool. This is mustache yarn in polka dot afro circus. The toe and heel are regia four ply. Um, it's a creamy white so I think it goes really well. I didn't do anything special. It's just my basic recipe, two by two rib. But I did my heel flap and gusset because I have found that that is my preferred heel. So that's what I did. And I just love them. They're crazy, but I love them. I haven't had a pair of self-striping socks for myself in a long time because I didn't dug all of my self-striping yarn. But these are for me and I love them. So Candace of Pin Feathers and Pearls is having a stripey sock knit along. If you don't know about it, one, go check out her podcast because she's amazing. And two, join. It's great. You just have to, I think you just have to start knitting them in March. So finished mine. Need to weave in that end and the ones in here. But other than that, Pair of socks done! One cowl for March complete. Put those down there. And then I have a half finished object. And this is for KT's Harry Potter knit along. This is my almost honey badger sock. The honey badger um, pattern. I think is by Erica Luter, who does the Hermione's Everyday socks, but I didn't like the um, flow of it very much so as you can see it's a yarn over pattern it's free it just wasn't for me this yarn is Oloops quarter round in Hermione's handbag um, if you don't know about Oloops you should <laughs> one they have the fiber by design podcast with Sarah and Lydia who are the dyers behind the yarn and every August they announce their Harry Potter knit along and if you're loving Katie's knit along you should also do this one in the fall. They have an entire collection of Harry Potter yarn that they dye every fall and this is one of them that I got this year. So Hermione's handbag. I did a short heel flap for this sock so that's what it looks like on this side. It's about the same. I love it. I love it so much. And I have not started the second sock. Here is the yarn in the cake. So great, great, great. I love the feeling of this yarn. Eric and Lydia are awesome. She said Eric. I have Eric from Six Plus Twine on my mind because I started watching him finally. I don't know what took me so long, Eric, if you watch this. Um, I love you. You're great. You're so great. I wish we lived closer. Well, we we live pretty close, actually. Only four hours. If you ever feel like coming to Detroit, let me know. <laughs> or if I come to Toronto, I actually might be going to Toronto on my honeymoon. And I will drag Doug to a yarn store. So... If that happens, Eric, maybe we'll meet up for like an hour and just walk around a yarn store together. Maybe? Maybe? But yeah, so this is the sock. Also, Chelsea and Sue of Legacy Knits. I'm just dropping all the podcasts today, guys. Um, Chelsea mentioned that she loved wood sock blockers. And, ooh. <laughs> I don't edit either, so that's gonna stay in there. <laughs> but Chelsea, you <laughs> can get these um, wood sock blockers. This is what they look like from the Loopy U. But you have to purchase two, because they only sell them one at a time. So, 
the loopy you. That's where you can get some Woodstock blockers. <sighs> I'm sorry, guys. Uh, hitting myself in the face. Not that rare of an occurrence, to be honest, but yeah, so this is the sock. I love it. I love the Harry Potter knit along. Um, I broke down and finally purchased a homespun house yarn, and it's Mermaid of the Black Lake. And I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So that should be here in April. I don't actually, I have no idea how long shipping takes for Molly, um, but I'm assuming that it's going to be in April, um, just for my experience with international shipping. I don't know though, because I've seen some people get theirs in like 10 days so fast from overseas. So more Harry Potter love coming and I'm really excited about it. And I have an acquisition because I have a funny story related to that that I'll tell you later, but I think it's going to be a pair for my niece everyday socks. Um, but we'll see. So yes, that is my half finished object or my hoe is my Harry Potter socks. And then whips literally all socks. I have a problem and I'm not sorry about it. I'm a sock knitter through like I love socks. I want to cast on all of the socks and I had to cut myself off because I need to finish my second Harry Potter sock. I have to finish this sock, my March socks, which I'll show you in a second. And I cast on two new socks. I don't know what I'm doing, guys. And then the Find and Dandy Cow with Jacqueline of Brooklyn Knit Folk and Amber of Yarn Junkie starts tomorrow. So I have to cast those on. It's a pretty flower sock, and I'm craving patterns right now because I've been knitting stockinette and garter for a while. And I'm just craving something with more brain power right now. So that's happening. And I think that's going to be my spring break knitting. You know, while... No, I'll talk about that after whips. So, works in progress. You already saw this sock, which is my March sock, and my featured um, indie dyer of the month is Molly of a Homespun House, which is another reason I had to order from her. And, like, I was thinking about it, and I wanted Mermaid of the Black Lake since she came out with it. I finally bit the bullet, and the thing that pushed me over the edge, because as much as I love socks, I also love my Cozy Memories blanket. And she was giving away two free mini skeins with any order. And I wasn't just going to order some progress, progress keepers from her. I was going to order yarn. So I gave it, and it was on the Olsen base, which is this base that I'm knitting with currently. And I just, I love it. So, it had to come home with, it had to, it had to be mine. I'm, I need to stop buying yarn, guys. Okay. So, I had this finished last week. Um, Molly of a Homespun House is my featured dyer, and I'm also going to be featuring a design of hers. Um, I'm going to cast on, probably for spring break, um, her one sweat shawl in Quince and Company Chickadee, which I'll, again, I'll show you after this um, when I talk about what I'm planning on knitting soon. So Molly is amazing. You should check out her shop. It's pretty bare right now, um, but it's the stuff that's left is still beautiful. So you should check that out because Molly is amazing. And I talk about her all the time because I love her. I would also love to just sit down and knit with her really would. So, that being said, I finally cast on the second sock, and I knit the ribbing, and the leg, the heel flap, I did the gusset, ooh, gusset decreases today while I was working, and I'm on the foot. I might be able to finish this tonight, for sure tomorrow, and that will be one pair of socks off the needles. So, so that's happening. I'm getting, I mean, I know I'm gonna be fine, but my cake is so tiny. 
<laughs> but I'm like, maybe I'm gonna run out. I know I'm not going to. That's not that. I don't have that much left to knit. I need to knit to just before the cuff on my foot. Because I have really tiny feet. I have size women fives, US. So I have tiny feet. So my feet don't take a lot of yarn. But work in progress number one. Hopefully that will be, it will be a finished object next time I record. Next, I cast on a pattern sock because like I said, I was craving pattern and just something with more brain power. So I got this yarn for my birthday. Um, my oldest sister, Kelly, uh, gave me a nitpick gift card. So I bought Thirst Heather Tweed. It's Stroll Tweed in the Thirst Heather colorway. Um, the ball's a little wonky because I took the ball band off for one. I don't have it with me. Um, and also, I just love going like this <laughs> to the nitpicks stroll and stroll tweed skeins because I always think this looks slightly like a spaceship like but anyway um yeah so I like doing that so I just squish it down so whoop, spaceship's flying away um so that's why this looks a little wonky but I knit so this is the Blueberry Waffle socks pattern. I forgot to write the designer, but they will be linked in the show notes. And you can find the show notes at the Stress Knits Ravelry group, and the link is in the down bar. So come join us. We're great. I love my Ravelry group, guys. They're so sweet. Um, yeah, so Blueberry Waffles. Free pattern. We all know them. We all love them. I'm knitting these on a US one and a half. These are the Knit Picks Majestics, the new ones, the purpley ones. So I really love this sock. I love how soft Stroll is. I forgot how much I love Stroll Tweed. It is, it's a favorite of mine. And it's affordable. So there is that sock. And then not only was I craving pattern and cast on that sock, I was craving something so incredibly squishy. And this yarn is so incredibly squishy, guys. If you've never purchased Baron Vola, you should. Um, as far as Indie Dyers go, I think that she's relatively affordable. And to make it better, she is from Germany, so shipping takes a while. Um, at least I found that takes a little bit from her. Um, but it's still relatively fast, like two and a half, three weeks. Um, but her barefoot sock is my favorite base. I've knit with it once before, and it was the pond colorway that we all know and love from Herb Splat, Herb Splat Regina. Um, podcast. She did a pond along with the pond colorway. I didn't participate in that, but it made me fall in love with it. And when I got it, I thought Doug had to have socks out of it, so I didn't have any Baron Vola socks. But I was obsessed with the Sakura colorway, and then she finally had an update that included it. So this is it. In the cake. It's gorgeous. I love it. And it's just so squishy and plump. It's a heavy fingering weight, and I only started the cuff, but I love working on it. So that's what it looks like so far. It's really pretty. I love it, and I'm glad I cast it on. So there is that. I'm going to take a drink of water. So. I will do stash enhancement first. So during my birthday um, month, which was February, I ordered a custom order from Laura of Jinx Yarn. And she's awesome and does that. And it's of anything, 
of any repeatable colorway that's not self-striping. And I've been obsessed with this color for a while. I even caked it already <laughs> because I wanted to put a square in my blanket and I tangled it a little bit so I just caked it. Um, I know it's only mid-March but April is going to be Jinx yarn. So if you want to knit along or if you want to, an excuse to knit your Jinx yarn or you want an excuse to buy some Jinx yarn, April's Jinx month for me. So um, I custom ordered a skein of her strong sock because it's my favorite base by her in the unsafe for swimming colorway. This lighting is not doing justice. I have my lamp on just because it's a little dark. Um, but it's not doing it justice, guys. This, there, ooh, there it is. Okay. Um, I think she said it was inspired by the part of Mexico where she went on her honeymoon with Jose, but I'm not sure. But I love it. I am obsessed with it. So, where's her label? Here's her label. Here's all of the info on Strong Sock. It's an 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon blend. So, Jinx. I love her. <sighs> okay, so there's that. And then I ordered some new needles because I want to knit Molly's shawl, but I have the Atwood shawl on the needles, which I mean I worked on, but I mean I put an extra repeat on and I just didn't feel like showing it. Um, I love it and I am going to finish it over spring break. I'm determined to finish it over spring break. But I'm going to move it over to these needles so that I can use my um, carbons interchangeables for Molly's shawl. So I bought a new set of marbles because I broke my size US 6 and I wanted, I'm knitting my Atwood. Oh, I think I knit it on a 4. Let me check my interchangeable needle set really quick. Sorry, this is probably like, what are you doing? Oh, I don't know if I'm knitting it on a 4 or 5. You know what, hang on a second. In my fawn in the fox bag. <laughs> We're gonna show you another whip, guys. Just because I'm pulling it out anyway, might as well show you. Yeah, I'm knitting these on a US 4, but I bought fives. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish the body on fours and knit the last section on a five. Um, so I have done five ridges. I just finished the fifth ridge down here. Um, I was, I'm just going to show it this way. That's where I was last time I showed it. I knit that much. So this is the Atwood Shawl by Nicole of Hugh Loco. Um, I'm using Swan's Island Natural Colors line in the fingering weight in the Glacier colorway. It's gorgeous. I love it. It's my Little Mermaid progress keeper. I love her. She's so pretty. So, I love this. But I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the body on the fours and then switch over to the fives. Because going from a 3.5 millimeter to the four to a 3.75 millimeter, I don't think. Correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. It's really not that much bigger. So, oh well. That's what I'm going to do. Because I'm going to use size 6 for the windswept shawl. But guys, can we just talk about Laura of the Fawn and the Fox really quick? So she has the Fawn Knits podcast. She makes these, she makes project bags and now dyes yarn, which 
I might have ordered a skein of her terrarium colorway, and it's on its way. <laughs> so, uh, but that's her label. And I think her husband does these um, stump prints. And I just, I love this bag. Oh, low battery. I have 20%. I'll be fine. So, I just love it. And I love Lara. I want to be her friend. But, yeah. I just love this bag. It's a really good shawl bag. But yeah. So, I picked up a set of marbles because I love marbles. But I can't really swing the interchangeable set right now. So, US 5. And it's pure pretty. So, time for the funny story. <laughs> um, one night, this week, I, or last week, I woke up <laughs> from sleeping and I looked at my phone like I do every morning and I, because I always have a bunch of emails in the morning, I always start getting emails at like 7. 7 a.m. is early for me. I like to get up around 9. 9 is my I'm a decent human being even without coffee time but usually I get up around 8 when I have classes so I woke up and one of my emails was from No Makers and it said my order had shipped and I was like I don't remember <laughs> ordering yarn um, 97% sure I ordered it while I was sleeping. I <laughs> genuinely forgot. And also, the, like, vague memory I have of it, I thought I ordered a different base. <laughs> and I'm happier with what I got because when I saw, like, I had a dream about it. And then when I saw... Like, I hit submit and it said bungalow base. I thought I ordered the sparkle gnome. I was like, I'm confused. Well, turns out I did order the sparkle gnome. And this is the garden gnome colorway, which is one that I've been wanting for a while. So, no makers. It's gorgeous. I think these are gonna be my Hermione Everyday socks. So, let me just open this up for you because that's what I do when I get new yarn. And I haven't done this yet. This is gorgeous. You guys, this is my first full skein of No Makers. I love it. Ah, my ring always makes it really difficult to retwist yarn. And I untwist yarn to get, ooh, there goes my water bottle. And I um, untwist yarn to see what it looks like all the time. Um, so I always have to take my ring off when I do this. Now that I'm on camera, I feel like all the pressure in the world is on. I can't tell though what color her Stellina is. Some of it took dye, but parts of it looks gold. So if you are a No Makers aficionado, what color Stellina is this? I think it's gold. I'm going to go with gold. But this is gorgeous, and I'm really excited that I have it, even though I don't remember ordering it. But. I also apparently ordered a mini of her Gnome on the Range colorway, which is a new colorway. And here it is. Ooh. And I love this. It's really pretty. It was only $2. And I'm going to put my ring back on because I feel weird without it. Okay. Pick up my water bottle. So there is the stash enhancement that has come. I'm just waiting on my Fawn and the Fox order and my Homespun House order, which I'll show when I get. Um, but like I said, I, even though I've already cast on a lot of things, I still have other things I want to cast on. So 
first things first, the fine and dandy cow. Um, I'm going to knit out of Hedgehog Fiber Sock in the Mint Julep colorway, which was a club colorway that I've been obsessed with for about a year. And Doug ordered this, or sent me the money to order myself because he had no idea what to do. It was a Ravelry D stash, and he's like, I don't know how to do that. So, um, yeah, so this is Mint Julep. This was my birthday present from him, which was really sweet. And I just, that pop of fuchsia, and there's rusts in here. So it's really pretty, and these will be my fine and dandy socks. I'm a little nervous though, because I'm not a toe up kind of girl. So if you guys would be so kind to mention other stretchy bind offs besides Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off, because I find Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off to not be surprisingly stretchy, I'm probably doing something wrong. I watched many uh, video tutorials, but I. Anytime I use it, it's not as stretchy as I want it to be. So I'd really like a nice stretchy bind off for my cuff of my sock if I'm going to do these toe up. So hopefully it goes well. I'm a little nervous. So fine and dandy socks will be cast on tomorrow. And then uh, I'm going to be casting on the When Swept Shawl by Molly of Home Spent House out of. Quince and Company, Chickadee, Chickadee, which is their sport in the clay colorway. So there is that. Um, yeah, so that's all for knitting. I had one question, let me ask me anything through it, and I forgot to write it down. But I remember the question. Um, because I was trying to figure out how to answer it in a tactful manner. So, um, I will give credit to the person in the show notes. But, essentially, the question was, do I like being an RA? And now, so you can see where the tactfulness comes in, because... I've had this job, this is my third year, and that is technically as many years as you're allowed to be an RA because you can't be one year freshman year. So I love my job. I do. But three years of it has taken a toll on me as a person. Um, absolutely. I love it 100% like I don't want you to think that I hate my job because I don't I love it I would not want to be doing anything else I am very thankful for the opportunity um, the perks that come along with it but 100% love my job but there is a very difficult I don't know the word <laughs> to put there. Um, it's it's difficult to live and work in the same place. So not only do I have to be available 24-7 to residents, I also work the front desk for 12 hours a week. And so it's a 24-7 job with the extra hours on top of it. And some of those nights this is the least I've ever had to be um, on call. We call it on duty, um, and you have a call. You have you have a cell phone. It's a flip phone, so that's always fun to explain to people. But it's a flip phone, and there's a horrible ringtone that will mess you up. My dad has the ringtone that was um, my other RA building phone. So to make something easy, seem complicated. Um, there are two companies that run the RAs. Um, what I'm in now is called Capstone, and what I was in was Housing and Residence Life. But it's the same job. It's just a company owns the buildings that I'm in currently. Um, and the duty ringtone for Capstone is much 
much nicer than the duty ringtone for HRL. So my dad has the one from HRL as his ringtone. Freaks me out one time we were at the beach on Lake Michigan and my dad's cell phone went off and I flipped out thinking I was on duty because I was taking a nap. Um, but I love my job. It's really, like I said, it's really hard to work where you live because you have to see people that might not be so happy with you all the time and are rude. I mean, it just comes with the territory. Um, I love it. I would not change these past three years for anything. Um, it's just, it's a hard job. It is. And people don't understand all the things that you have to do. Um, like, funny example is we are under the boil water advisory right now. So I have had people come to the front desk when I was working and ask me if there's anything I can do to get the water to come back on and be safe. <laughs> and you just have to look at them and just, nope, there's nothing I can do. <laughs> so I hope that answers that question. Um, yeah, it's just, I feel like there's only so much I can say about it that isn't, doesn't come across as me hating my job, because I don't. Um, it's just a lot. And then with being a full-time student, and then I used to work at Starbucks for two and a half years and worked the maximum hours that I could work there. And so, like, I'm just drained from life. <laughs> but if you were in college or you are in college, be nice to your RA because it's hard. It looks easy to everybody else, but once you're in the position, it's it's hard. Um, I feel like I've been rambling on about that. So hopefully I'll see you guys on Monday or sometime next week. Um, also, not next Monday, but the Monday after, I will be traveling back down here, so expect another late episode in two weeks for travel, and I have the hiccups right now, so that's fun. Um, I have to play a volleyball game at 10.30 tonight because I'm on an intramural team, so <laughs> I'm probably just going to watch podcasts for the rest of the night until the volleyball game. So I feel like I'm just rambling. I don't know. If you stuck around this long, thank you. And yeah, if you have any questions for me, just general questions, knitting questions, anything, um, ask in the Ask Me Anything thread that is in the Ravelry group. So I hope you guys have a wonderful week or so. Um, I hope you get to knit all of the things. And yeah, um, if you won the giveaway, make sure you private message me on Ravelry. Okay? So. I'll see you guys later. Bye.